You know, I really wish that this video was clickbait, but unfortunately, it is not. But before we really get into it, I am gonna do a P science giveaway. Any product that you want, all you gotta do is like the video, leave a comment down below. It could be anything, but also include your Instagram handle so that way I know how to get a hold of you. But anyway, we have to tear the house down. That's the bad news. The good news is it's, it's not this house, it's, it's another house. So the other week on Instagram, I was doing a Q&A, so if you don't already follow me there, make sure to do so, and I got so many people asking to elaborate on the farm, and I realized that a lot of you might be new here and might not know anything about it. So by definition, I am a farm owner. I don't talk about it a lot because it's nothing that I really did to deserve it. It was more of just being born into a family of farmers. My dad was a farm. I grew up there my entire life in the small town of Springfield, Ohio. And when he passed, because I'm an only child and my mom is already gone, then it ultimately just was left to me. Now I know what you're thinking, oh this kid just living a life of privilege getting a farm handed down to him and, and trust me, I, I grew up just fine. We never did without meals, I had clothes, I had everything I could have ever needed as a kid. But you can see the house that I grew up in is not quite like the house that I live in now. So it's not like we lived in this huge estate and we were some conglomerate that just had all this money. It's a, an amazing business. It's just not something that I wanted to take on personally. Now, I still know very little about the business of farming, to be honest, but what I did learn is it is really not that profitable of a business. So if you're in the middle of deciding between being a farmer and flexing your butt on Instagram and your only goal is to make money, I would highly suggest you go the Instagram route because farming is gonna take a long time. And honestly, the amount of expenses associated with it can drown out your entire revenue for a year depending on yields and all this other stuff. It's just, there's a lot that goes into it. So let me illustrate real quick. So this is really the worst way to possibly do this. I need to get an actual whiteboard if I wanna do things like this, but just entertain me for a second. So ultimately, when you purchase a farm, there can be instances where there's already a house there, so you have to buy it all together. So that is kind of what my dad got into uh, as the years went on. He was a farmer for his entire life. So the way that you know our operation was kind of set up, this is at a very high level. You have one main farm, had a house on this side, a house on this side, and then across town you know you have another house with another farm and then down the road you have another house with another farm and there's farms scattered throughout but these are the only ones with homes on them now you might be looking at this like it is a cash cow because I'm gonna be collecting rent from all of this right well you got to remember not many people can afford to just purchase this stuff outright so they have mortgages and think of the mortgage on your house multiply that by a nice little factor to get a mortgage on a farm with the house, so I still have to pay all that. Ultimately, my goal with the farm is just to break even until we really figure it out. But anyway, we have this this big home right here, okay? The issue with this home, and there's always been an issue, is it's almost too big to rent because it's really hard to find a single family that wants to move in unless you want to make it a duplex. We never really want to put that much money into it, so I had to make a decision. Now, mind you, this house right here, this is the house that I grew up in. It's like 100 years old. This house over here, I don't know much about it. It, it might be a little bit newer, but this house is also like 100 years old. So I made the decision we need to get rid of this home altogether because the amount of money that I would have to put into it just wouldn't make sense for the foreseeable future. And there's also things that you need to measure besides just the money. Like for me, it's peace of mind and liability. I got a message from someone I didn't even know on Facebook telling me that there were squatters in this home because no one's renting it right now and they built a meth lab. And I'm just thinking to myself like, what in the world am I supposed to do about that? So I'm kind of freaking out internally uh, then she messages me back and says, oh, actually, that was the wrong house, not your house. And so that was kind of the final straw to let me know this thing has got to go. So besides getting a really good title for a YouTube video, the other benefit of tearing the home down is at some point, I could build something that's a little bit newer and more suitable to actually rent. And maybe in some, at some stage, it would turn a profit because I'm not really entertaining the idea of selling any of this in the short term. I'm thinking about this from a long-term perspective. Generationally, maybe my kids will wanna go back and live on the farm and that'd be awesome because the crazier this world gets, 
the more I want them to grow up like I did, around wholesome people and away from some of this craziness that I interact with on a, on a daily basis, but that's a subject for another video. So I hope that helps clarify a little bit of the farm situation. It's not, you know, that cut and dry, but there's a lot that goes into it for sure. But again, I'm merely just the owner on paper. I have a family that operates the entire thing, takes care of the day-to-day, -day, and, and they are de facto the owners of, of the farm. Thank God, they, they saved my life, uh, for sure. Have you ever seen the movie Angels in the Outfield where the angels actually come down and, and you know complete all of the plays for the players? That that's them. So without without that, it would have been a, a whole other story and who knows what where we would be right now. But if you guys want to see me just like rolling down into John Deere, I'm sure I'll, I'll be headed back there sooner than later, and maybe we can make some farm vlogs for everybody. Riding on a horse, ha, you can whip your horse. How you doing, baby mama? I'm good. I just woke up from a nap. Just a little nap before we go to lunch. Mm -hmm. All right. Everything good with the baby? Mm -hmm. All right. Anything you want to tell the people? She has so much to say every <laughs> video. <laughs> Apologies for not taking you guys along with us for the day. We did not bring the camera, but it is many hours later and I'm about to have a little nightcap. And I'm gonna be having some magic spoon cereal. So here is all that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get myself a little bowl. I'm gonna open up the box. This is the cocoa flavor. I'm gonna just pour my excuse me. It's so good. What happened <laughs> to my magic spoon? It was my dessert a few nights this week. Oh, the, the box, it disappeared. Now, thankfully, we do keep more on deck. This is our favorite flavor. This is the cocoa. They also have the peanut butter, and then what is this one? Frosted and fruity. You guys have probably seen this on my channel quite often. This stuff is incredible. The macronutrient breakdown, 140 calories, seven fat, 15 carbs, and 13 protein. The biggest telltale sign that this is awesome is that Megan eats it and now eats it religiously, which is awesome because getting protein in her diet is probably the most challenging thing to do. And for me, what I like to do at the end of the night when I want something that tastes delicious, but of course I don't want to eat like a pint of ice cream or anything like that, is I'll have some magic spoon. Not only am I going to get 26 grams of protein for just two servings, but it's going to almost like bring me back to when I was a kid and I would have a bowl of cereal before I went to bed. It's just delicious. Let's try this again. So we got a fresh bag here. I'm going to be having two servings, which is going to be, oh my gosh, about however many grams 37 times two is. One second here. <laughs> I've been out of accounting for a long time. 74 grams. So actually, let me just show them. This is one serving right here. I mean, that is a decent sized serving. Typically when you eat cereal, the serving sizes are not great. So that is impressive. Going to mix it with some almond milk. What's incredible, they've given you a much better macronutrient breakdown without sacrificing any of the taste. And the best part is the milk afterwards. It's like the best chocolate milk you could ever imagine. Excuse me, how does this keep happening? You're a cereal thief. Now you all know I've been trying to lose a few pounds and this has been one of my cheat codes. It comes in clutch. It's something that I can look forward to every single day. And because they've been nice enough to sponsor today's video, you all can get $5 off a variety box. So whether you wanna get the cocoa, the peanut butter, the frosted, the fruities, I've heard very good things about the cinnamon roll as well. I really wanna get my hands on that one. All you have to do is use my code Travis. I'm gonna have it linked down below. So if you go to magicspoon.com slash Travis, I believe is the code. I will have it linked and on the screen right now. You can get $5 off your variety box and what's awesome about them is they stand behind their products so if you don't like it for any reason you get your money back but i can assure you you're gonna love it now i know for some of you yolo saturday nights are a good time to go out and have fun but in this household we typically go to bed early edit some thumbnails get the videos ready for the next day because i always release videos on sunday and you guys check out that video i put on instagram the the real i guess the kids call them just tell Greg how amazing of a job he did on that. So go to my latest Instagram, check that out. He crushed it just like he does in all these videos. Should I make more videos for Instagram? Let me know in the comments down below. I, I suck at being an influencer.
ask you guys something because I think the world is shifting towards short form video content. So I have my standard YouTube videos, you know, 12 to 15 minutes, but more and more every platform is pushing the short form, right? So what do you guys watch the most of? YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, or TikToks. I actually just created a TikTok. Uh, I have nothing on there. If you guys wanna follow me, I'll have Greg put on the screen right here. But let me know, I'm trying to keep up with you crazy kids. Okay, so I'm gonna end this workout with as many push-ups as possible. So here's the deal, if I can do at least, call it 50 straight push-ups, you have to like the video. I've never done 50 in a row, I don't think in my entire life, but I feel like if the pressure's on, I can get it done. So here we go. Oh, this was a bad idea. Gosh, oh, that sucked. 27. I mean, if you want to give me a sympathy like you can, but I'm not going to lie to you guys. So next week, I'll try it again. Maybe we'll get 30. We'll work our way up to 50. All right, so today we're gonna be wearing the Cuts tee, of course. This is the Curve Hem, I believe. I love this white for the summer, and then I've got some of their shorts as well. Some people ask me about this hat, and honestly, I have no idea where I got it. It's the only hat that I own, and I got marketed on Instagram. I was scrolling, and it hit me with an ad, and I bought it, and now those ads are all over the place. And also, shout out to Camera Wife that spent all week putting together this dresser for the nursery. She got it from Ikea. It came in like a 1,000 pieces, and she did it all by herself it looks great very cost effective if you guys want to know what it is uh you can leave a comment i'll have her send y'all a link but it does look pretty good for being ikea hello where are we going for lunch Travelous smoothie. i don't know that i've ever eaten food well I, I have in college but it's been a while typically you know i just get a smoothie there but it sounded kind of good megan is wearing a los angeles shirt today she's actually been living in the hype house uh with all her tiktok friends <laughs> hey buddy you want to go on a car ride? Car ride? Let's go! Let's go, buddy! Car ride! Hey, bud. Hey. Does anybody go to Tropical Smoothie? I feel like it's one of those places you see all the time, but you never actually go there. I ended up getting, what is this called? A detox? Detox Island Green. Essentially, it's spinach, kale, mango, banana. It's a bunch of help. It doesn't taste that bad. This entire thing is less than 200 calories. That's pretty good. You can get yourself in trouble there. I mean, some of those smoothies are like 700, 800 calories and you think they might be healthy. And then I got a buffalo chicken wrap. This thing looks delicious. Mm, we might be sleeping on top of a smoothie. Circling back to the farm, one of the biggest lessons I've learned so far is that you don't need to know all of the inputs, all of the keystrokes, all of the ins and outs of how the business operates in order for it to still be successful. And think about the company that you work for. I'm sure a lot of you guys are like, what in the world does my CEO or my COO do all day? They probably just sit there with their feet on their desk and living the good life, right? Because it's not like they're sitting there in Excel inputting data. You know, they have people to do that and they just sit there and they have the information brought to them and really it's their job to use their experience and their judgment I would say most importantly their judgment uh, to make business decisions that move the business forward and I think the most important thing that you could possibly do is surround yourself with the right people that you trust and that you are confident in that they can help you make these decisions. And that for me has really reduced a lot of the anxiety. I'm sure I'll still make some bad decisions. I'm sure I'll still make mistakes, but having people there that I can rely on uh, that maybe have more knowledge than me, well, they absolutely have more knowledge than me, gives me a lot of confidence and it uh, helps me sleep a lot better at night for sure. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is I'm going to be putting CEO in my Instagram bio and selling you all courses because I'm so much smarter than all of you. I love having pasta on Sundays to end the day. I just feel that it gives me a lot of energy going into the week. It's probably all psychological, but we just have some meat sauce and some regular noodles. And honestly, this is probably one of my favorite meals of all time. For those of you who didn't give me a sympathy like earlier, how about this? If I can finish this bowl of pasta without getting anything on my white shirt, then you have to like the video. <laughs> I 
empty bowl, clean shirt. What do you think? Should I like the video? I have to. Excuse me, ma'am. What you got? You know what? She's a thief. She is a cereal thief. Magic spoon. We're gonna need some more cocoa. If you can beat them. So I'm gonna end the day at right around 2,600 calories, which is on the higher end for me uh, right now on this cut. Uh, but as I mentioned, I'm kind of just playing everything by feel. So tomorrow I'm sure I'll go back a little bit lower uh, now that I'm all fueled up. And I'm looking at my weigh-ins here. So I weighed in today at 177.2. Last Sunday was 177.5, so I lost a whopping 0.3 pounds, but that is nothing to get discouraged by. A lot of times how this works is you'll lose a few pounds initially, and then you'll just kind of go stagnant for maybe one, two, maybe even three weeks, and then all of a sudden you'll drop like two more pounds. It's just you have to give it time and not get discouraged. Trust the process. But thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to watch. You could have been doing anything, anything in the entire world, and you chose to spend a few minutes with me. That is pretty awesome. Please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I look forward to talking to y'all next time.